So the last thing I want to talk about in terms of the, uh, the technical design of my robot um, are some of the render settings and some of the, the um, aesthetic options that you can control uh, through the render setting. Right now we're rendering this, uh, I'm rendering this project with just the default render settings. This is what you get when you just light a scene effectively. But we can actually, um, we can make some adjustments to make this look a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, launch my render settings here and I want to talk to you about a couple of options that I think are, are, are a lot of fun. Um, and, and both of these are effects. Uh, and you'll notice that by default I have this object glow. Um, that's because I, I um, by default I have a, an object that, um, a material that I set a glow factor on. And uh, if I give that a render, in fact let me zoom in a little bit here, and if I give that just a a simple little preview render. It'll take a minute, it'll render, and then it'll apply the glow after uh, the render. So we see the render take a place. This is a post effect. And you can see that when the render is done, that's when the glow is applied. Um, well, there's a couple of other kinds of effects. Some of them are, are uh, happen at render time and others are uh, post effects. Uh, and one that might be kind of interesting is there's a cell renderer. And if I just turn that on, uh, by clicking on it, I see what the options are, and if I just give that a quick render, um, <coughs> it basically renders just a, a flat, simple outline um, of my robot. Okay, now that's, you know, kind of fun, but it uh, doesn't really look too compelling. I mean, it's kind of interesting to see what the, uh, what the shape of the object is, uh, but if I turn on edges and I give that a render, uh, you can see that it renders uh, pretty much a line view or just the geometry of my model. Okay, so if I, again, give that a render, it's not shading the object, it's not applying any textures. Uh, that's by adding cell renderer and turning edges on. Let me turn edges off and give that a render again. Okay, this is the default view uh, with cell renderer. Now, if I turn on color, uh, I get a combination of the material colors along with the outline of the cell render. So this makes it look, um, this changes the aesthetic of the thing. It gives you a, a nice crisp outline to all of your geometry. And this starts to look a little bit more cartoony. So I can start to see the geometry on the outside uh, of these objects. So it basically traces all the geometry and that's kind of an interesting quality. Um, the edge color, for some reason, if I wanted to change that to say a dark red and give that a render, uh, now I have this red line um, that, you know, kind of travels around and traces the outside of the geometry. I like the black, or maybe I'll even go with like a real dark blue. I'll say OK and give that a render and see what that looks like. Um, so that's kind of interesting to me. In addition to that, I can turn on color and edges. And uh, a lot of times you'll see this when people render out their projects to show you uh, some of the decisions that went into the geometry or how much geometry is in the object. Right now I'm getting a full render, I'm getting shadows, I'm getting the modeling here, but I'm also showing the, the lines in the geometry. And if you remember, um, as we model and as we build segmentation into our object or, or introduce all the geometry, this is just showing you um, what the geometry is made of. So this is kind of an interesting thing, and you'll see this a lot in portfolios and demo reels of people that, that will render, um, they'll render their model and then they'll show a wireframe of their model that's basically just showing the geometry. And people, you know, uh, might make some decisions to render it with just real flat, uh, just a real flat line art like this. And sometimes they'll, they'll uh, choose lots of different solutions to show that. But um, this is what you're seeing uh, when you look at other people's demo reels or other people's portfolios. So. Uh, as an aesthetic decision, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on cell render. I'm going to turn off edges. And uh, I like the quality. It starts to make it look a little bit more cartoony. Okay, so that's one decision I'm going to make. In addition to that, um, there are some qualities that will improve uh, the shadows and um, the shading of the object, which is ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion, basically, in really short terms, uh, just adds a more sophisticated shadow. Um, when I turn on ambient occlusion, if I look at some of the shadows that are happening down here uh, at the transitions in the geometry, they're going to be much more sophisticated. I get a much darker shadow down here. Let's take a snapshot of this arm. I'm going to turn off ambient occlusion 
and render. Uh, and one thing that you'll notice is that um, it renders a lot faster with ambient occlusion on or off. Uh, there are some subtle differences. If I look down here at the bottom, uh, right here in the belt of my uh, robot, you'll see that without ambient occlusion, uh, it's, it's relatively flat. And when I render with ambient occlusion, I get a much darker uh, uh, shadow with a gradual transition as it falls away. So just a more sophisticated shadow. Um, that's essentially what ambient occlusion translates to. It's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the simple answer to what it does. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it makes your shadows look a lot better. So, uh, but you can see that there's a, there's a real significant price to pay for it. And so if you don't see um, an obvious difference with or without ambient occlusion, you might want to just leave it off. So for the rest of the demonstration, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, one final effect that you need to be aware of is an extremely apparent, uh, uh, important one, and that is global illumination. Uh, global illumination is kind of the cornerstone of um, uh, photorealistic uh, rendering, uh, and it primarily has to do with the way that, that light and uh, materials and reflections are calculated inside the scene. Now, by turning on global illumination, when I give this a render, my render is going to look a little bit different. It actually does multiple passes of the render, um, and when I render this, it's going to look dramatically different than it did without global illumination. And it might not be Im immediately obvious, um, my light sources are probably going to be a lot stronger. And, and what, what global illumination does is it calculates uh, bounced and reflected light. And so immediately we can see a dramatic difference uh, in terms of the color and the lighting quality. And what happened is the lights become much more intense and it kind of, the, the scene is completely overlit. Okay, and that has everything to do um, with global illumination calculating all the bounced light in the scene. So a lot of times what you need to do when you start using global illumination uh, is you need to adjust your lights. And I'm going to adjust my light simply by taking my, um, my key light or my most important light, the one that's casting the shadows. I'm going to take that down to, let's say, like 55%. I'm going to take the fill light and I'm going to bump that down to probably half of whatever it was. So maybe like 15%. And I'm going to give that a render and see if that... Um, and see how that looks. Now you can see that with global illumination turned on, uh, we're, we're paying a huge price for rendering, okay? But um, if used properly, global illumination can really uh, dramatically change the results of your render. Now, um, one of the most important things that global illumination will do, um, aside from changing the aesthetic of the render, um, is that it, it really um, pays attention to uh, Importing a uh, sort of important bounced light and reflections and just to demonstrate this and Actually, let me demonstrate this inside the robot project uh, I'll just take and add a little bit of geometry to the scene Okay, so I know this is a reflective material so I'll, I'll just really quickly drag and drop that I'll take this sphere and I'll just try to get this sphere kind of Maybe close to the leg and sort of overlap with my my cube here. And I'm going to make this just a little bit more reflective, just temporarily, just so we can see more dramatic results. I'm going to give that a render. Now it's going to take a little while for this to calculate. It's going to take into consideration the global illumination. I'm much more reflective, so I'm going to have a lot more bounced light going on. Oops, and I forgot to do something. I really wanted this red uh, material on, on the ball. Because really what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the interaction uh, between now this texture and this material. And I... Offline added a little bit of a smoke effect here. We're just taking a moment to render. But what we're getting is we're not only just getting um, the reflection here. Okay, and I'll turn off the reflection in just a minute. Uh, but we're getting um, some bounced light and we're getting some transitions here. We're going to start to see some red and some uh, gray and some blue uh, bounce around in the shadows here as well. So, and even back down here on, on this uh, darker side of the sphere, you can start to see how much bounced and reflected light is being picked up here 
um, and, and, and the kinds of reflections that are being picked up. Now, if I turn off global illumination, I'm going to see uh, um, you know, essentially dramatically different results uh, from that render. I've inadvertently changed my Let me just lift these objects out. I had two different documents open. This will take just a moment. I'll pause. I'll let this render and I'll turn it back on when it's done uh, rendering. Okay, so here's the render with global illumination, and what we should start to see um, is when, when you get two materials and, and two textures close to each other, uh, you start to get the, a, a play of color bounds back and forth. So um, this is the render with global illumination, and now I haven't adjusted my lights fully. It's still uh, very, in my opinion, overlit. Um, this is the global illumination render. And if I turn off global illumination and give the surrender, uh, this is what it looks like without global illumination turned on. So uh, by default, you get a lot more light in the scene. Um, there, there's some upsides and downsides to using global illumination. It's not going to improve every scene simply by turning it on, uh, but you will get much more sophisticated uh, results between uh, the shadows and the textures and, and anything when it has to do with bounced light. Um, so what I'm going to do is determine whether or not I'm going to use global illumination and adjust my lights accordingly. I'm kind of going for more of a kind of a uh, a real stylized approach here. Something's kind of you know almost cartoony, and uh, because of that, I think I'll be able to get away without using global illumination. Uh, so I'm going to adjust my lights. I'll bring those lights back up. I'll give this a render, and uh, I'm still a little underlit right now for um, not using global illumination. So I'll make a few adjustments, but but more or less this is the aesthetic that I want to go for. So uh, the the final thing that I want to talk about is um, uh, staging my robot and posing it uh, in an effective way. And so in in some of the examples that that we showed, I'm not going to pose my robot right now. Uh, on screen. I'll, I'll show you a couple of renders. Um, I'll go back and I'll make some adjustments, but I, I, I'm not going to take the time to pose this robot here and maybe I'll build a kind of a real simple temp temporary environment for it to exist in. Uh, but one of the renders that, that I want to accomplish uh, is I want to show a couple of different sides of this model at the same time. And so we looked at um, a few examples where they would show a three-point turn or a five-point turn. And one way you can achieve that directly in Cinema 4D is by simply copying the model, making a duplicate and rotating it. That's one technique. And so let me take everything um, that has to do with the robot. I'm going to select all these parts. I'm going to group it, and I'm going to call that robot. Everything else has to do with the environment. So I have the cylinder with which the... Uh, uh, the robot standing on, I have the lights and the sky, and uh, my robot's just kind of uh, standing here. Let me really quickly change my cell render to I want a black outline. What I can do is I can take that robot and copy it and paste it, and I'll just kind of move that back and over, and I'll just rotate the whole robot. Okay, now I have a nice flat side profile view. I'll copy and paste that new robot. I'll move that over and I'll go to rotate and I'll rotate this around until I see a nice flat either back view or maybe I'll rotate this to where I see uh, essentially a front view. There's a nice flat front view and I'll zoom out just a little bit and I'll give that a render. And so now I can see my robot from three different directions all at the same time. I see uh, uh, my perspective view of the robot. I see a nice flat view that kind of shows me uh, the gesture with which the robot is standing from the, the profile view. And I see a nice uh, flat front view. And uh, that gives me a pretty good idea of what my character looks like from a couple of different positions. Now what I'd do is I'd work on posing this character 
uh, maybe setting it in, inside some kind of an environment. And I'll do that offline and I'll, I'll, I'll show you um, uh, a render of that. But just remember, if I want to see what the geometry looks like, I'll just go into my cell render and I'll turn edges on and I'll give that a render. And now I can see how much geometry, just by kind of looking at this, uh, is included in that model. And it's all pretty simple geometry. So uh, these are the things that we want to keep in mind when we're um, starting to compose a render. Uh, you know, we'll compose our character. And uh, at this point, what I would do is I would just, um, I would do some simple renders. I would go through the process of actually uh, not just rendering a preview, uh, but but setting my render output under the save tab to determine the location and do a render to picture viewer. I'll overwrite the existing render with the new composition that I have. Uh, and at this point, potentially what I could do is I've rendered out to a Photoshop document, or at least when this, this is done, uh, and I can open this document up in Photoshop, and I could do a little bit of post-production on it. Um, I could do something like add a title of my robot name. Um, I could just do some, some real quick, uh, make some real quick design decisions here. I could say edit, and I'll just fill this with black. And now I have something where I can include some text. Um, I could have some, some uh, line art that has some call out, maybe some descriptions for the different parts. So if I wanted to play around with this, and, and, I, and I won't take too deep of a dive into this, but if I, let's say, grab the line tool, and I just kind of, maybe I'll do like a little infographics piece where I have a line, and then I'll have some little descriptor um, that this item is the exhaust. So my robot is going to run on fossil fuels. I've decided, and uh, so it's going to spit out um, some smoke from the exhaust pipe. So maybe I'll have a little bit of text in there that says something about the exhaust pipe and give a description about why, in fact, there is even an exhaust pipe there. Uh, and I could do some really cool things by playing back and forth uh, between, um, you know, a two-dimensional design interface like Photoshop or Illustrator uh, and a three-dimensional design interface like Cinema 4D and, and, and do some really interesting stuff. So that's going to be uh, the concept and how I push this sort of thing further. And you'll see some renders of that or some compositions of that. But, but uh, you know, this project is really about experimenting with what you already know, either in a 2D environment and a 3D environment, coming up with that robot design, uh, experimenting with, you know, simple textures and lights, and just have a lot of fun with this and, and uh, learn a little bit more about the workflow in Cinema 4D. Output this content to something like Photoshop. And if you don't have Photoshop, that's okay. Uh, make sure that you get a three point render at least and experiment with these different, uh, these different strategies and come up with a really compelling presentation. So I'll, uh, I'll continue to work on my robot. I'll stage it uh, and get some renders out to you. And uh, we'll post this according to the due date uh, in the syllabus. So have fun with this project. Good luck. And if you have any questions, as is always the case, just post in the discussion board and, and we'll all catch up. So have fun.